So we're going to look at a special type of cord known as the cord of contact. Now when you see what it is, you'll see why it is called that. It's quite logical. There's our standard parabola. Now, as we've seen, from any external point to, to any conic, not just a parabola, to a circle, um, to a hyperbola, any conic, an ellipse for that matter as well, you can draw two tangents. So one tangent would meet at a point. Let's give it a parametric, 2AP, AP squared. The other tangent will meet at the point, 2AQ, AQ squared. Now, the chord of contact is the chord that joins those two points of contact. Hence the name. So PQ. Now, the thing is, the only thing we know is the coordinates of the external point. So the question is, how do we find the equation of the chord PQ when all we know is the coordinates of this external point? We're going to do it two different ways. First way is using parametrics. This is the, the parametric approach. So first thing we could do is, well, now that we've given those points of contact parameters P and Q, we could find the equation of the chord like we did a while back now, but we, we came up with an equation like this. P plus QX minus 2Y is 2APQ. So we could do that. We also could find the equation of the two tangents to those points. And then we could find the point of intersection of the two tangents. And it would be AP plus Q, APQ. Remember, the only information we know are the coordinates of the point of intersection. So now I can find a link between P and Q, the parameters, and something we know. Because I can say, oh, hang on a sec, I know T is the point X naught, Y naught whatever those coordinates happen to be. So therefore, x naught must be a p plus q. Rearranging that, I can say, ah, well, p plus q is x naught on a. And I can say, well, y naught is a p q. All right. So the equation of p q, remember it was p plus q x. Well, for p plus q, I can put in uh, x naught a. Minus 2y is 2apq, oh, but we just said apq is y naught, and now there is no parameters in the answer. Remember, we didn't know what the parameters were. We didn't know what p and q was. What we knew was x naught and y naught. And so we've got the equation of the chord in terms of the numbers that we knew, x naught and y naught. Well, if I tidy that up a little bit more, something amazing happens. If I rewrite it, look at that equation. X naught X is equal to 2A Y naught plus Y. That's very familiar. What was it yesterday? Yeah, but it didn't represent the chord of contact. What did it represent? Right. So the equation of the chord of contact is actually the same as the equation for the tangent, which, remember, was the same as the equation of the parabola itself. x squared equals 4ay when we rearrange it. They all have the same form. The difference is x naught y naught is not on the parabola. So when it's not on the parabola, we get a chord of contact. But when it is on the parabola, it's no longer a chord of contact. It now becomes a tangent rather than a chord of contact. Same formula, basically. All right. That's a lot of work when you think about it. Look at all the steps we had to go through. We had to show the chord PQ had that equation. Find the equations of the tangents. Find the points of intersection and then substitute it. That's the parametric approach. It tends to be the approach people are very comfortable with, but there's a quicker way. If I take a Cartesian approach. So now PT, like we did yesterday, the equation PT is X, X1, 2AY plus Y1. But I know T, the external point, lies on that. Therefore, when I substitute it in, I get this statement, and it must be true. X naught times X1 is equal to 2A, Y naught plus Y1. It must be true, because T is also on the tangent. So therefore, I could say X1, Y1 lies on a line with this equation. Now, all I've done is I've swapped, if you look, See, in the first one, it was we called it PT, we called it the tangent, where X1 was the point we know, and X was the variable. And the same with the Y's. Y1 was uh, the point we knew, and Y was the variable. But that was an equation of a line. 
So this is still an equation of a line, but instead of um, x be one being the, the, the point we know, x naught is. And I know this must be true because we go back to t lies on the line. So x naught times x one is two a y naught plus y one. So all I'm doing is replacing. I'm saying uh, instead of x one, I'll, I'll call it x, just some random value of x. And then y some random value of y. So that must be the equation that x one y one lies on. Q two would have this equation. X two now because it's a different point Q, but I can do the same thing. I can say, well, hang on, t lies on that as well, because it is um, the point of intersection. And now I can use exactly the same idea. Well, hang on. I know x0 times x2 is 2ay0 plus y2. Therefore, it must be true to say that x0 x is equal to 2ay y0 plus y. And if I substituted x2 y2 into that, I get a correct statement. So x2 y2 must lie on that line. But that's the same line that p lies on it. So if p lies on the line, and Q lies on the line, it must be the line PQ. So therefore, there's the equation of con the chord of contact. Now, it feels like you've done no maths. But you have. You have. Because remember, all, the equation, all we're looking for is something that says some multiple of X plus some multiple of Y is equal to some constant number. That's a line. That's all we're looking for, and that's what we've ended up with some multiple of x and some multiple of y and then there is a constant there as well. So that is the equation of the line we're looking for. As I say, most people feel far more comfortable with the first approach because we're happy with algebra. I can work this out and get it. This is more a logical way, I guess, of getting the answer. So. Alrighty, so 9H, play with some of those quarter contacts. I think it probably gets you to do it both ways in there. But have a go at both anyway if it doesn't. See how we go.